All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast today. We have with us William Brown, a good friend who's from UK, now in Dubai. And he's been doing amazing things with his business. Um, he has an online course business and he also runs a boardroom mastermind in Dubai as well. And he recently sold his business for a massive multiple seven figure exit. So we're going to be talking about all these things, how he grew his business to begin with, um, his move to Dubai eventually selling his business and what he plans to do next. So I think it's best to just start with like how you even got started to begin with, because I know you're from Manchester and that's where you kind of originate everything. So I'm just curious, like, how did you start the business to begin with? How did you come up with the idea? And then how did you kind of build it from there? Yeah, for sure, man. So <clears throat> really, I've kind of been an entrepreneur since I was pretty young but I kind of kind of didn't really know it as, as weird as that sounds so when I was young like I got into one of my first ever passions and hobbies was like skateboarding but instead of just skateboarding I took it upon myself to like get a camera start filming you know what what we were doing make skateboard videos I would design like cover art for the DVDs and, and edit it and then I would sell the finished videos to like my friends and friends of friends are probably like a pound per DVD. So ghetto. But, you know, I didn't kind of realize it at the time, but I had, I went more in a creating products and selling things direction rather than just enjoying doing it. So that was that. Then I got into graffiti. And again, instead of just doing graffiti, I would like, you know, I got a camera, I would take it everywhere. I would take pictures of everything that we were doing and our friends were doing, other writers were doing. And then I made like a little, um, little magazine. We used to call it like a sign, a graffiti sign back then. And again, I would like do the pictures and I got Photoshop, learned how to use it, made, you know, all the pages and learned to put it together, saved up to, to get it printed. And then I would go to shops and try to give it to them on like a, sale or return basis. I'd try and sell it to people that we would meet when we were traveling and stuff like that. And again, instead of just doing it, I just gravitated more towards kind of productizing it and building a little, it was, it was far from a business. Like I probably made like 400 pounds from, from, from the graffiti magazine stuff, maybe a bit more, but nonetheless, again, same thing happened. I made a product out of it instead of just doing it. Then I got into, uh, DJing when I was like 18, 19, got, got into music. And that was like my first proper dream and my first proper career. So I wanted to be like a famous DJ, DJ all, all over the world. Um, that dream did actually come true. So I got signed to a record label called Deep Medi, run by this really famous global DJ called Mala. Um, I met him in Manchester when I, when I was at university there studying music. He signed me to his label. I got a manager, got an agent, started touring all over the world. And it was it was awesome. Super fun. Dream come true. And again, it was that was really my first proper business where I made money because I made like hundreds of, of thousands of pounds uh, doing that over the span of about kind of six, seven years, um, by the way. And again, I was like building a product, like my own records and selling them. I did like my own merchandise. I would sell sticker packs, sample packs, that kind of thing. So again, instead of just doing it like all my friends, all my friends would just buy records, DJ, play tiny little sets and stuff. They never wanted to be big professionals and stuff. I did. I wanted to build a business, build a product, go as far as I could, build it as big as I could, blah, blah, blah. Right. And then... Towards kind of my mid twenties, I just really started to hate the music side of things. So I, I didn't enjoy making the music anymore. I, I hated the traveling because I was on my own. I was lonely. You know, it was like Friday night, go to Sweden, DJ there, come all the way fucking home. Next Thursday, go to Belgium, DJ there, come all the way home. Next weekend, go to New York, DJ there, come all the way home. Sounds pretty good, but God, it is like not fun. In, in, in my opinion, and it just got worse and worse. And I thought, number one, I can't DJ for the rest of my life. I can't see myself DJing when I'm 40, 50, 60. So something's got to change there. The money was okay. I was making two, three, four K a month from it on, on, on like average. Some months, one show for 700. Some months, a few shows, two, three grand. 
blah, blah, blah. So, so that was kind of the average income. And I was starting to think like, I need to do something else. Like I want a higher income. I want to build wealth. I don't want to have to do this physical DJing for the rest of my life and just rely on a lot of luck as well. Because if a record doesn't do well, you don't get bookings, blah, blah, blah. So there was a lot of risk in it as well. And at the age of about 26, uh, I came home from a tour one day and uh, I lived with my parents, got home and there was a, a trading documentary on TV all about a few British traders. It was very glamorized. It made trading look like really easy. You know, there was a guy making like apparently like a thousand a day from his computer at home in his bedroom. And I was like, man, if I could trade as well as do music, this might be the answer to all the problems because then I can make money from trading. I can be more selective with the DJ bookings that I do. So it takes the pressure off. I can hopefully grow my income. Then I can like invest in property and start building wealth and all this. So I was like, man, this might just be the answer. So straight away that same night onto Google, opened a trading account, put 500 pounds in. And over the next kind of five, six months through nothing but beginner's luck and messing around, no strategy, no edge, no risk management. I took the 500 up to about 12K, 11, 12K. And I thought, oh my God, I'm going to be a millionaire. This is amazing. I was trading whilst on tour once. I was DJing in India and I took a trade at the airport in Manchester. And by the time I got to the hotel in India, I made like 700 pounds, which was actually more than the fucking show. The show was like 500 pounds. And I was like, man, this is, this is a game changer, you know? And then one day, um, I took a trade and basically I like wiped about eight grand, nine grand in a day, you know, from, from, from 10, 11, 12 down to like three. And I was like, oh, I learned my lesson then, you know, I learned that I didn't have a strategy. I wasn't managing risk and it was just luck, pure, pure, pure luck. So I made a decision at that point that really completely changed really my, my life. Sounds cheesy, but I took the money out. That I still had in there. I actually let, went back and left just 500 in again and took the rest out. And I bought a couple of courses. Um, I hired a couple of like trading coaches, one from this fund in New York, one from a prop firm in London, blah, blah, blah. And over the next year, year and a half, I learned to build my own strategies. I became profitable, started to turn things around and kind of find my feet. And um, at the time, around that time, I'd started a Twitter account as well, just to like share my trades, talk to other traders, share what I was doing. And one day, one of my kind of friends and followers, this guy Wissam, messaged me on Twitter and he said, look, well, if I PayPal you 50 pounds, could I come to your house and sit with you for like one, two hours whilst you trade and learn what you do, how it all works, blah, 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 because I don't really know what, know what I'm doing. And we were local as well. And we've been chatting back and forth kind of thing. So he PayPal'd me 50 pounds, came to my house and we made this word document whilst he was there, you know, like get this broker. These are the markets we trade, blah, blah, blah. This is what you're looking for. And it just occurred to me a few days later, I was like, I wonder if any other Twitter followers would buy the word document. So I kind of chatted to a few other people that I was in conversation with. And I was like, oh, dude, Wissam came over, you know, a few days ago, we made this word document. If you want it, it's 50, uh, 50 pounds and you're going to, you're going to learn what I do and how I do it basically. And a few of them bought it, right? So three or four people bought it. And I was like, shit, like people will send me money for this, for this word document. It's like no work. It felt like free money. And it was also, I could just put it straight in my trading account as well. So it had like a double benefit and they, they gave me some feedback on it. So they would say like, oh, can you put this in? They'd ask me questions. So I made the Word document into like an ebook kind of thing. You know, six, seven, eight pages, pictures, text, all this stuff. And raised the price to like £100 or whatever it was. And it still sold. Like more people bought it. So then I started like, you know, I started kind of posting more tweets that would... In, in like an attempt to get people to to buy the education from me, right? And I didn't really know it at the time, but that was the start of the whole e-learning company that, that I've built over the last seven years. So from there, I started a YouTube channel. 
which was super powerful. And I'd post like recordings of my trades, helpful little videos and stuff. And I would just, I created a website at that stage and named the business. Um, so it was kind of starting to become more of a, more of a thing. I had a sales page on the website where you could buy what by that stage was like a Dropbox folder of videos, a few PDF documents, blah, blah, blah. And that evolved to, you know, I was charging like 300 pounds for just the videos, 750 pounds for the videos and the Word docs, a thousand pounds for all of that and a few coaching calls. And I just slowly started to mess around with pricing and the, the product and the coaching and stuff like that. And in the first year of, of that all happening, I did about 30 grand. I think this was 2018. The following year in 2019, I did about a quarter of a million. So it was going fast and, and very, very well. And then I was DJing in London one night at the end of 2019, because I was still doing a bit of music in the background. And I saw, I saw an Alex Becker ad on, U, on YouTube when I was in the hotel room. I remember it clear as day. Um, and I clicked the ad, watched the VSL, booked in a call, and I bought his like Iron Mastermind program thing that teaches YouTube ads and how to properly build a product, price a product, sell it through ads, build a funnel, all that stuff. Because I didn't even know what a sales funnel was. At all. I didn't know what a VSL was, what a webinar was, what ads were, how to make them, nothing. And it literally in the space of about, about two weeks, I hammered the program. I made ads, made a auto webinar funnel, did all the emails, blah, blah, blah. Uh, started charging 1.5K through the webinar, turned ads on in January, 2020. And we did about 1.2, 1.3 million that, that year. So we're like 4X from, from the year before, all driven by paid ads. And COVID happened as well at that stage. So everyone was at home. Everyone was online wanting to make money because they couldn't kind of work. It was like the perfect time ever. And the business just blew up. You know, we just were making so much money. We crossed 100K a month that, that year as well. So that was pretty big for me back then. And um, yeah, it's just kind of grown from there. You know, so 2021, I joined Samovan's Quantum learned what a VSL funnel, how it works. Then we moved from the webinar to sales calls with a sales team. And then we grew up to multiple millions that year. It really blew up when we moved to a high ticket product. So we moved from 1.5K through a webinar to like 4K through a sales call. And that just, we grew so fast. That year we got up to three, 400K per month range and on and on. You know, I just kind of learned little bits, kept making it bigger, better, learning along the way. Um, and then I joined a mastermind, uh, Dan Bradbury's Financial Literacy Mastermind. And he was the one who taught me that I could sell the company if I wanted to. That's how I kind of got that knowledge and that inspiration to exit one day. And then last year I decided um, I'd achieved all, all the goals that I'd ever set. And the only goal that I hadn't achieved was to sell the company. So I went back to Dan and I was like, can you kind of hire you for one-to-one -one coaching? Can you help me find a buyer and sell the company? So we did that together. And obviously about three weeks ago, we, we closed and I, I sold the thing. So you're catching me at the end of the journey right now, basically. But, but that's, that's the story. That's the story. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Amazing summary. I just, you, because I have a better idea given now kind of how you started, because obviously you were 26, which is interesting because I'm basically 26 right now, which is when you when you, when you started. Um, and you, you, you were going it pretty fast because I had in my mind, I thought you started when you were 20 or something, but it's pretty recent. Like you're really going on like, what, three, four years. And that's it. You just, you went to Dubai straight away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude, yeah. I, uh, I only moved to Dubai through, when I joined Sam Ovens Quantum, mastermind one of the problems that i had at that time was was tax and also i hated the uk rubbish weather you know what one of my personal dreams was to live in a hot sunny country as well um so i kind of yeah there was a few people in some ovens quantum that had moved to dubai already and then when i posted in there saying what are you guys doing for tax kind of thing they were like oh we live in dubai there is no tax and i was like what 
like what you know so and then i realized like wow i can solve the tax problem and i can solve that goal i can achieve that goal that i set of living in a hot sunny country as well um, and i just moved straight here man literally i didn't overthink it you know i had a few conversations with the guys that had moved here already some tax advisors and i was like let me just go now let me just go right now so and that was like two years ago two and a half years ago yeah i mean that's that's that must have been pretty big tax savings for you as well um so essentially it's at as close to zero as you can get right i mean i think i think there's like a little bit but it's pretty much zero right uh for, yeah. for everything so i'm guessing yeah so what about sell, selling your company is that would that have been at completely zero as well or is that a bit a bit different oh because because you said you, you recently sold your company so would you still have had to pay those taxes to like hmrc in uk or would that have been just uh, tax free in dubai yeah so it was a uk company so when we when we sold because we sold the assets and not the shares right if we would have sold the shares that's basically like the entire business goes to them 100% um and they take on everything and if that would have happened they could have just sent me the money through dubai and there would have been no tax but they didn't buy the shares they just bought the assets so i still have the company still got the bank account all of that stuff it's just there's no assets in the company and they are now reincorporating it in america with all the assets essentially so i'm i mean i'm in the process now of closing the business closing the bank account blah 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 but yeah there was tax to pay on the sale unfortunately but not sorry yeah it's it's quite a process right to 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 close um to close down a uk company because yeah, I, I, I was asking my accountants to when i was planning to do it and you know, it was like there's like this filing and that filing it's like they make it extremely easy to open it's like because i remember what to open your company is like five ten pounds or you, you could probably even free sometimes yeah, yeah. and then to close it's like you got you got to pay a fortune and file a million papers yeah it's god this this whole process man it's thank god that i got good money because if it wasn't for the money i, I wouldn't have sold i just would have turned it off kind of thing but um yeah it's been a process man it took like eight eight months from like deciding to sell to finding an m a advisor finding a buyer then one deal fell through with a vc firm after two months because they wanted to go in a different direction with the the roll-up that they were doing then i found the private equity firm that eventually bought us um, they made us a, a really good offer so we sold for 2.6x net profit basically um, then yeah six months of due diligence they had to like go through the program interview all the team members speak to customers go through all the finance for financials rebuild the financials because they're a u.s company with u.s accounting we're a uk company with uk accounting so that was a whole mission in itself but got there in the end and um, i'm happy now they're happy you know the business is, is doing really well and i know that they're going to grow it because they, they've got great plans for it so happy days happy days oh you're muted dude i think yeah um i think a lot of people probably wonder like the exact amounts but obviously in these kind of situations um you, you know there's like contracts in place where you can't say the exact amount yourself or unless you agreed on it beforehand right so you mentioned 2.6 x ebitda right that's correct. the profit yeah so so good, yeah i can't say the exact amount because of the the nda and the, the asset purchase agreement i know that i can say the multiple again 2.6 uh ebitda without fully kind of breaking that down it's essentially net profit that is the simplest way for most people to kind of understand it without going deep on 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 all the kind of facets of it but uh yeah it was it was a multi seven figure sum so not not the most money in the world it wasn't like 10 million 20 million 30 million it wasn't a massive exit by any means but i kind of wanted i wanted to sell it to prove to myself that i could in a way because i thought if i can sell it to a high quality buyer for multi seven figures then it's like it's proof that you've built something great because private equity firms don't buy random shit companies you know so yeah you know, I'm, I'm I'm actually curious, and maybe others are like, because obviously you're generating cash flow with this company every month, and 
you, you also had a good team in place that was pretty much doing most of it for you. Uh, mm. You know, you put into place. So why not just kind of keep it more hands off? So this thing over the next five years, you will technically be making more money. That's I guess that's just what I'm thinking about to get to get your thoughts on. Yeah, for for sure, for sure. Now it was very very hands off, but I was still doing like the key stuff. So if we needed new ads, that would be me that that made those. If we needed a new VSL, that that would be me. If we had to hire, I still had to play a a, a big part in hiring. Sales team manager would would do it, but I'd still need to interview them once or twice and help onboard them and, and blah blah blah. So it was very passive, but not not fully passive. So there was work to do. And part of the reason that, that I wanted to sell is because I just didn't want to grow further. You know, we, we were getting pretty big. So when, when we sold, when we actually signed the initial LOI, we'd literally just had a 824K month uh, US. So we were doing well, doing big numbers. And I, I was making a, a lot of money, man. The margin was still like 32, 33, 34% at that stage. But I just, it was kind of last November, I was downstairs in the, the cafe, writing in my journal, just thinking like, right, I'm, I'm in my thirties now. Where am I going? What do I want to do? What's important to me? And I asked myself this question. I asked myself, if I had all the money in the world and I never needed money again, what would I do now for fun every day? Right. And basically the answer was not running that trading company. You know, the answer was, I, I, I love talking about business. I love helping other people build build businesses. I love hanging out with other entrepreneurs and sharing ideas and, and, and blah, blah, blah. Um, I'd stopped trading by that point as well. So I wasn't, I wasn't even interested in trading anymore remotely. I'd made millions of pounds from, from the company. I've bought millions in real estate. I've got high seven figures in cash after tax. I own my apartment in Dubai outright. So my expenses every month are honestly like 3K. Um, so if I wanted to, I could just stop working and quit everything and, and more or less live forever. So it was like passion time, you know, rather than work and, and make money time. And yeah, I just thought, I don't want it anymore. I don't need it anymore. I don't want to grow it further. I'm not inspired to grow it further. Could I scale further? Yeah, yeah I could scale further for sure. Change the model, deepen the back end, hire more reps, blah, blah, blah. But I just thought, what the fuck is the point, man? Like, what the fuck is the point? Like, I can do my passion business, make half the same money with no team, no ads. I'm passionate about it. I love it. Way more fun. So I was like, what the hell am I doing? You know? And I just thought, it's a great business right now. So if I don't sell it now, I might not be able to sell it down the line if, if I take my eye off the ball. And I also thought by selling it, I get even more bloody cash to play with as well. So it's just it just felt like the most common sense thing to do. You know? So when I'd thought about it like that, I made the decision. And I was like, you know what, man, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to sell so I got straight on the phone with Dan. I actually WhatsApped him there and then when I was downstairs and I'd written it all in my journal and built the plan. And I was like, dude, I want to sell. Could you please help me? Let's go. And he was like, yep, yeah. hide him the next week. Got straight to work. So so that's that's why I sold because I got to the point where I'd done everything that I wanted to do with it, essentially. Yeah. Is there also part of it, um, obviously on top of all that, like let's say you did keep it, you know, because you said you said you're doing the ads, you're doing a lot of different things, and think you know the creativity and the long term strategy. If you stayed in it and you hired out those positions, would would your profit or what you get to keep kind of gone down a bit as well as you like hired out those positions? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So if I would have decided yeah. to keep it, I would have hired a CEO to to be me essentially. That would have brought yeah. the the margin down. And also, here's one big thing that I've learned, and this is like, this has actually changed my life, really, really knowing this. Whatever you 100% focus on grows, and whatever you don't focus on slowly dies, right? So 
I'll give you an example. There was this one stage about maybe 10 months ago where every single day I would update my net worth spreadsheet. So I had all my properties on there, all my bank accounts on there, blah, blah, blah. And the number, the cash, the net cash figure, every day I would update everything. What's changed in the Stripe? What's changed in the bank account? What's changed with this? Blah, blah, blah. And the minute that I started looking at my cash number every day, it actually started growing a lot faster than it had because I was focusing 100% on growing cash, net cash. And then it, that affected all my decision making as well. Because before I was focused on cash, if it was like, oh, we need a copywriter, just get one, just get one, 3K, no problem, let's go, you know, fine. And I, I would be a lot more frivolous with money because we were making so much. But when I started focusing on the cash, you know, and we like, oh, we need to hire three new reps over the next quarter. Well, do we go? Because if, what if we just get one good one? Then it's cheaper, it's faster, it's better for the margin, blah, blah, blah. And I just started taking financial decisions a lot. Just, yeah, with, with, a, with a focus on growing cash reserves. And that really started to grow. Um, I'll, I'll, other examples, but basically when, to answer your question, if I would have removed myself and just pretty much left it alone, it probably just would have slowly gone down, you know, because there's no care there. You know, as CEOs, they don't, they're not you. You know, when it's your business, you can't beat that. You can never hire for a, for a, for a you that really loves what, what you do, you know, and I'd lost the love for it, essentially. So I, I could have done it. It would have been interesting to see, you know, and remove myself and, and see, but I guess I'll never know now. So, yeah, I mean, it's you know, there's pros and cons to both, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously you did your journaling and you, and clear, you know, you made the right decision, I think anyway, because you seem to be doing very well with your, your boardroom mastermind. You enjoy it as well. So, yeah. uh, you can't go wrong with that. It's actually, it's also, there's also more personal interaction. I don't know which interaction you had with the last client, but this one is really like, you know, you meet them in person and you go to dinner and all that kind of stuff. So it's, yeah. It's, it's, probably, it's probably more fulfillment when you, when you help them. It is, mate. Yeah, I, I was saying this to, to a client earlier that, that I had a call with because we were talking about like different models and how far you can scale each model, adding friction to a sales process and a funnel or taking it out to affect costs and stuff. And basically he was like, you know, I, I want to scale to a million a month and, and beyond. And he's not in a vehicle that can scale that far. His niche is too small. His price is not right. He doesn't have a back end, blah, blah, blah. And I was saying to him, like, it, it's all about your goal. So if you only wanted 20K a month, well, stay where you are. Keep doing what you're doing. You're there. Fine. If you wanted 50K a month, well, let's just do a back end and we can get you there. Fine. If you want a million a month, we've got to change everything. Right. And for me, with the business coaching now, it's one to one. You know, so I literally do one-to-one -one calls with the, the business owners that I coach. They get access to my training. They can come to the mastermind as well, three days in person in Dubai. Not, It's not scalable. You can't scale one-to-one. -one, you can't scale human time. But I don't want to, right? My goal is not to scale. My goal is to work with awesome people, have fun, feel fulfilled, and enjoy it every day, you know? Um, and I'm, I mean, with the business coaching, I'm doing about... 75k a month pounds net right now so it's good it's really good money you know um 100 net no ads no team no meetings no company shit just easy profitable and fun you know and this is what i want and this is what i've built and this is what i've got so yeah nice nice and, um, i mean you seem to have other people in your mastermind as well. So are you like, are you partnered up or is it just mainly you that does it? Yeah. So um, I partnered with David Dre from, from Sam Oven's team. Sam Oven's uh, old head of sales, best, best sales rep there. Just because um, this is going to sound so gay, but basically when, when I started the mastermind, I'd never done one before um i was a bit nervous to do one i thought oh my god will i like it will i enjoy it i've got to do three days in person with these guys and i said to david i was like dude please can you just help me just help me sell it 
help me build it, help me run it, be there in case I can't answer a question and I'll sit down and you stand up and we'll swap out. Um, so he just like had my back really. And just, it was like a, a mini mentor, you know, uh, but dude, it's gone so well. It's gone so well. Like it's just so fun. It's so awesome. It's like this, but all weekend with 15 cool, high, you know, hardworking, focused entrepreneurs all building great stuff. It's the best ever, man. I, I can't believe that I get paid to actually do it and run it and just have fun. It's the best thing ever. So that sounds amazing. And why, why would you say there, um, there's a lot, a decent amount of people have joined the mastermind entering, but they're also flying out from different mm -hmm. countries to come to Dubai. And you've mm -hmm. started this pretty recently. I mean, not that long ago, because obviously you were in your, your other company. So what, what's got people so people then is pretty much instantly invested into, you know, paying premium prices, flying out, coming to you directly in Dubai. Um, you know, what would you say has uh, created that appeal? Well, dude, this is going to sound very unprofessional, but the truth is I actually don't know. I, I, I actually don't, don't really know. Like when uh, a guy bought a ticket the other day, came on a, on, on a call, you know, 12,000 pound full pay to, to buy a ticket. And the first thing that I usually ask people is, where did you find me? Like whenever I have a sales call, because it's all organic, I always say to people, where did you find me? Um, and so far, it's just, it's just mostly word of mouth. So all my clients, I've made them tons of money that I've never had a client that hasn't been happy and, and made money ever so far. So the word of mouth is, is, is amazing because everybody says good things. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I first launched the Mastermind last year, I just kind of played on the 10 million award, you know. So I waited till I got the 10 million award to launch it. And I thought, if anything is going to help me sell it, then it's, it's got to be that. Because that's, that's my only edge over other people, you know, because kind of so few people have won it. I thought I could use that as like a marketing tactic, essentially. So I called it 10 mil mastermind um, to kind of play on, play, play on the award and that credibility. And I just posted in school in like the Sam Ovens groups, in the Alex Becker groups, in the Cole Gordon groups, um, and just people bought it, you know, <laughs> so happy days. And then the first one went so well that that fueled the second one. And the second one went so well that that's now fueling the third one. So again, it's like the results from it, the you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, I don't really know why people want to come. I guess they like what I've done. Or if, I mean, I've learned a lot. You know, I've learned a lot of stuff from scaling so far, building a team. We've done it in a couple of different models as well. You know, webinar funnel for a couple of years, sales team funnel for a couple of years. You know, we've done we've done a lot of revenue. I mean, uh, by the time I sold, we've done about 18 million in, in sales, US that is. Uh, top top line revenue across the almost seven years that, that the company's ran for. So I've learned a lot. I've got a lot of value to add for sure. But um, yeah, I've just, just, I, hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, it's, I think that it's interesting what, what you mentioned. But of course, you have the credibility. Right? I think that's the biggest one, probably. I mean, because people, they can just see like, all right, he's done it. I want to grow to eight figures. William has done it clearly, um, clear proof, and he's doing it well. So, and he's offering to help me, which obviously is rare because to have someone who's, uh, you know, has an eight figure company also offering to teach you in person. So, that that is a rare thing. And also, you know, showing the award and, and then, like you mentioned, it compounding every single mastermind with different people coming in. Yeah, another thing that I'll say as well that's really helped me. So a lot of people keep saying to me when they come on sales calls, like, oh, I don't want another coaching program. I don't want group coaching. I want like one-to-one. -one. And as far as I'm aware, I, I, hope, I really hope that this doesn't sound big-headed, but as far as I'm aware, I'm the only person in this whole space that has scaled as far as almost 20 million sold the company to, to private equity for a multi seven figure sum. And I will actually get on calls with you once or twice a week 
us on Zoom and build your fucking business with you. Because I basically do it for people. I write people's VSLs, write their ads, sort their funnel structure out, help them with the back end, help them with like just just everything, you know. And uh, it's quite expensive. It's not cheap to work with me. It's like a monthly recurring fee that, that, that people pay. Uh, the recurring side of it is absolutely sick as well because when you get people results, they never leave. So it's, yeah, it's it's just the best model ever. You can't scale it. It's time consuming. You've got to love it. If you don't love it, you're going to hate your life. But I love it. So <laughs> good times. Yeah, of course. I mean, though, yeah, that, I guess that, that's a big one too, right? It's, the, it's, it's a lot of factors that come into one kind of offer. But yeah, the one-to-one, -one, yeah, I mean, yeah, because a lot of these guys that do have A figures, that do A figures, for example, will be like a group coaching kind of thing, or it's very like hands-off. But in your, your case, you're like, we'll do in-person mastermind and one-to-one -one calls and for a pretty good price as well. And that's what I think. I think it's a very good price, but also because you seem to like it. Like you said, you you enjoy doing it. So you, you haven't priced it at an insane rate. Which you probably could have, right? I mean, probably could have done that. I wanted to ask you about your um, your kind of wealth wealth building strategy. You mentioned as well a few times, like you know, the real estate portfolio and a few other things. Um, you know, what's what's your strategy when it came to that? Because you did say you know you hit all your targets. So what's kind of the is real estate the main thing, or and then having a cash balance of like seven figures? Like, do you plan to add to that or just kind of grow, grow those things? Yeah, so I'm I'm very risk averse and very security driven, you know. So the more secure I am, the bigger kind of I can. It's it, here's the thing, right? So the e-learning company started so weirdly with with that guy just offering to pay me to come to my house. I never wanted to start a business. I never wanted to start some big e-learning company. You know, it just happened. And then it happened a bit more and then it got a bit better. And I thought, oh shit, this is making loads of money. Let me do a bit bigger, do a bit better, try and make more, blah, blah, blah. But here's the truth, man. Like all the way, I always thought, oh, this is going to, this is going to end soon. People are going to stop buying it soon. The ads are going to stop working soon. The funnel's going to break soon. This could, and I've always been aware that like no business lasts forever, you know, Almost all businesses fail within within five years. So just to get across that is, is is mad. But I was always very conscious this could end at any time. So I've always saved all my money and bought real estate with cash. Okay. So I I I, I don't like debt. I don't like any debt either. Um so I just thought to myself, well, look, if I can buy as much real estate as I possibly can, if I can get to like a million, two million, three million real estate then I can live off the rent and then I won't care whether the business fails or not because I'll already be rich so it kind of doesn't matter. And then the more wealth I built, the harder I went in the business because I because I cared less about the, the downside, you know? So that actually helped me to scale as well. And I had the cash to reinvest in ads and hiring and, and growing the company. But my wealth strategy is pretty simple, man. Um, make as much net cash as possible, buy real estate, outright with cash, no mortgages, rent it out and own your dream, dream house or apartment with cash to get rid of mortgage and rent and control. You're not at the whim of interest rates and, and, and stuff like that. So the risk is removed there. Again, coming back to like me being driven by security. So just removing all things that, that could, could go wrong and could impact the wealth. That's all I've done, man. I just, uh, you know, Saved up and bought a little house, then bought a bigger house, then bought a couple of apartments, then bought another house, another apartment, bought my apartment out here across the years, basically. And um, yeah, I've kind of got to the stage where my rent that comes in every month is is quite a lot, you know, uh, five five figures uh, per, per month. Is that correct? Yeah. Five figures a month in rent. Good cash reserves um, so that you can chill you know because there's nothing more stressful man than financial stress i think financial stress is the worst in thing in the bloody world you know there's there's nothing worse i i will i will never forget man like 
how broke I was back in the day when I was fucking living with my parents, trying to get by on like 2K, my girlfriend saying, can we go on holiday? No, I've got fucking four grand. Like, no, we can't go on holiday. <laughs> I've got to pay my car, fucking 400 for my car, fucking all this shit. You know, fuck me. There's nothing worse than financial stress. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I 100% agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's... But everything just going up, all the costs are going up, and pretty much everything you do needs money. Yeah, like there's, there's just no way. Yeah, it's yeah, this yeah, it's just you, you always need more. There's always more inflation, more cost of living, more everything. So, mm -hmm. so, um, so could, yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say. Um... That's why I kind of love uh, real estate the most, you know, as opposed to like investing in index funds. I don't really like that, you know, um, investing in kind of more speculative stuff like crypto and watches and, and stuff like that. Um, my investment kind of mandate is very simple. Make cash, buy real estate in, in the highest yield areas possible with cash, no debt, and just carry on doing it. For, and I'll I'll just do that forever, you know. Um, I'll just keep buying real estate forever, really, because you want to get money out of the bank as well, you know. Um, it's it's actually risky to have a lot of cash. You've got to spread it out across bank accounts as well when you get to that level. But the good thing is with real estate, when inflation goes up, rent goes up, you know. So inflation actually, you you raise your rents, so you're always staying ahead of inflation. Your money is in a safe place. Touch wood. Mm -hmm you know, in the houses and apartments and stuff, they're appreciating in value as well, that kind of thing. So real estate for me just ticks every box. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, I remember when we, when we met in, in, in Dubai, I was mentioning Bitcoin to you as well. You didn't, you didn't seem to be very fond of it. You know, you mentioned like, you know, it's the, mentioned a few reasons, I guess the speculation. And, uh, so what, what, are, uh, what are your thoughts on, on, on like, not because crypto is very different to just Bitcoin because Bitcoin is the main one. And there's everything else, right? It's like there's gold and there's all these other things. But gold is like the main thing. So I don't know if you have that much research on it in general, but what are, you, what are your thoughts on crypto and Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin is different. So let's see. Yeah, I think um, one of my mentors once said to me, just stay in your lane. You know, like what you're good at, stay good at, do more of. And unless you're going to really go and properly learn something and properly dive into it and do it properly and take it seriously, just stay out of it, you know. And um, crypto, for me, I just, I just, it's risk. I've got to learn about it. I've got to properly learn about it if I'm going to put proper money in it. And there's just no need, you know. I had a business that was printing cash. Uh, real estate was was just awesome. It's it's always worked for me. It always done well. So I was like, let me just do what works and just keep it simple. Stay focused, you know. So I I, I might be making a mistake. So maybe in fifteen years I'll look back at this this call and be like, damn, I, I should have listened to Lot Lotfi man and and bought crypto. But I don't, you know, I don't want to be the richest guy ever. I just want to. Be happy, have fun, you know. Yeah, so I'm good. Yes, fair enough. Yeah, I do. I do like real estate as well, but obviously it has its own downsides. Mm -hmm. And there's there's Bitcoin, which it has a lot less downsides. So maybe that's, that's for not another conversation. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's definitely downsides. But here's here's one good thing about real estate that I was about to say it's a downside, but I actually take it back i was going to say you know obviously real estate is highly illiquid like if you want to sell it it could take months it's going to cost you money and it's going to take time before you get that money back out of, of the house and sell it and get it back in the bank and you've got to pay capital gain tax and, and, and blah blah blah. index funds you know you can have your money out in in a day to two days to, to three days depending on where it is specifically but i like not being able to touch the real estate money because i've had I, I've had an index fund in the past and at one stage it came down by like 12% and 
and um, I just thought this this asset class just isn't right for me. So I took the money out and bought another house with with the fucking money. And like I hate how liquid that stuff is actually because you can mess around with it too much and make mistakes, you know. So, but true, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess if you have it in like, like a hot wallet or on an exchange, but with like crypto, I guess index funds, you can't take it to cold storage. You have to keep it on exchange or brokerage account at all times. Whereas with crypto, you can actually take it like to cold storage. And you can't sure. sell it. Like, you have to go there and move it across. It takes a long time. The main thing, I said Bitcoin has, uh, made, like, obviously there's, there's a lot of different things to it, but what the, thing I like about it most is the fact that you can move around and actually carry it with you. So let's say True. I left this country to that country, I can actually take all the Bitcoin with me without, you know, for example, if I had real estate or other assets or a company, it's still stuck there in many ways. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's something that, yeah. You, you, you're right there. You make, a, you make a good point, man, in terms of kind of getting it like on a physical drive and kind of keeping it with you. Um, and I think to be honest, it's when you get to a certain level of wealth, you've got to diversify, you know? So I'm, I'm sure there'll come a time where I might just put 50 K in Bitcoin and get it on a, on a hard drive and put it in a safe kind of thing, just to have it there. My watch is like that as well. You know, part of the reason that I bought the watch was it was to celebrate a certain wealth level that I hit back in 2021. But also I like the fact that, if I, if I ever need 40 grand, then I can kind of get it pretty fast. It's like keeping a little spare 40 grand on your wrist just in case kind of thing, you know? So it's nice to have that ability to take it with you. You know, you can, a, a lot of people um, uh, launder money through, you know, watches in Dubai and, 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 and that kind of thing. I'm, I'm not a money launderer ma myself, you know, so I can't comment on how it's done, but uh, yeah. I, I get where you're coming from, Matt. Yep, 100%. So in terms of your, your plans for the future, so obviously you've, you know, you, you've gotten to the stage, you have your boardroom mastermind. Um, like, is that, is that kind of the future for now? Or do you have something else bigger in mind or something else in mind for the time being? Yeah, that's it for now, man. So, um, I mean, one thing that I'm really yeah. enjoying at the moment is making YouTube videos. You know, because it kind of takes me back to when I was young, making skateboard videos and just having fun with it, filming, editing, all that stuff. So making videos has kind of always been a passion of mine, actually. So I'm really enjoying making YouTube videos and just sharing everything that I've learned and, and giving all that away to, to help people. I, I actually, I know, I know that this sounds really unprofessional, but I didn't expect to get as many sales calls booked from the YouTube videos as, as I have. So I uploaded a video about me selling the business. Um, my videos were getting like 300, 400 views each at that stage. So I expected the same. It's got like 23,000 views. It's booked me like 60 sales calls, um, which is just, just, just insane. I've canceled two. The rest were, were highly qualified as well. So that's got me tons of new clients, sold some mastermind tickets, that kind of thing. So the plan really is have fun making YouTube videos to, to, to help people. Um, if anyone comes to me for business coaching, if I'm able to take them on and it's a good fit, then I will. And I'll, I'll help them there. Um, run the Dubai boardroom mastermind every, every six months. We've just done like an annual membership now where you get the mastermind and coaching with me and keep, keep having fun with that. And with all the spare cash, carry on buying real estate for the future. And then I'm sure that there'll come a time when I stop doing the one-to-one, -one, when I probably get bored of it, or I might decide to scale the business coaching. I don't know yet. So there might come a time where I change the model and, uh, and stop doing the one-to-ones. That might be six months. It might be two years, might be five years. I don't know. But for now, I'm just keeping things very simple, keeping things very fun prioritizing fulfillment and, and happiness over money now and um just yeah always looking at things through that lens of like 
will I be happy doing it? Will I be fulfilled doing it? Do I, do I want to do it? Do I like the person? All of that stuff. So business coaching, business growth. Yeah, for now. Yeah, things been going very well. So I don't see any reason not to. Um, I want to ask you as well, because you've come up and you've, you've done a lot of different things. You know, you just gave that quote about focus and tracking your net cash, net net worth in cash every day. So what, what are some like li- a uh, couple of life hacks that you found to be like very useful and profitable to you? I could tell you some, but I don't, <laughs> I think some would uh, probably, probably upset some people because they're quite drastic, but I'll, I'll try and kind of say it in a, in a non-offensive way, but basically one thing that's really helped me is keeping my life as empty as possible. Right. So, um, I've, I've actually consciously avoided getting married. I've avoided having kids. Um, uh, I kind of don't want that stuff yet. And in my opinion, not having that makes your life a little bit simpler. You've got more time, you've got more energy, you've got more focus to put into what you consider most important, right? Which for me was, was building the company. So I think keeping my life immensely simple, uh, only having a few very good, very talented friends has, has been a big help as well. Um, because they keep you pushing forward, you keep them pushing forward, that kind of thing. And um, it's just just deadly focus, man. And oh, I'll tell you something else as well. So I always plan the next two or three things that I'm going to do, right? So I, I'll give you an example. So if we rewind about a year and a half, my goal, well, one of my goals was to scale and get the 10 million award. So I was like, right, you know, that's like my North Star goal, scale to 10 mil. Cool. But what am I going to do then? Well, when I get to 10 mil, I'm then going to reevaluate what I'm doing, where I'm going, what I want, right? So when I get that award, I will kind of start to think about that. And another goal was to exit one day as well, when I learned that I could, you know, so I had a bit of a, I had things in my head. Another thing was, was the mastermind. I thought, right, I've always wanted to do a mastermind on business growth, but it's now's not the right time. So it's like, okay, step one, scale to 10 mil. Cool. Step number two, use the credibility to do a mastermind. Cool. Step number three, if I enjoy it, maybe consider switching this up and getting rid of the trading education company and blah, blah, blah. If I do decide that, step four, exit, right? When I've exited, step five, use that credibility to start a YouTube channel and get business coaching clients, blah, blah, blah. Step six, on from there. So I'm, I'm always thinking, if I do this, then I can do that. And when I've done that, that will allow me to do this. And when I do this, that will help me get over there. You know, so I'm very, very, very clear on exactly what I'm going to do, when I'm going to do it, how I'm going to do it, where that's going to lead next. And that aside, I've always got a list of goals that that I want to achieve. So about three years ago, I read uh, this book and it talked about setting 20 goals whereby when you've achieved them, you'll die happy. I know that it's a bit kind of morbid, but I've been ticking those goals off along the way as well. Like one of them was to buy my dad a Porsche. You know, one of them was to buy this watch when I get to a certain net worth. One of them was to buy my dream apartment or house outright with cash, you know, by a certain age, stuff like that. So I've kind of got those guiding things. Like another one is to write a book as well, which I'm doing right now, you know, so that, is in the editing process right now. That was another one of the steps as well. I was like, I can't write a book until I've done that and that and that. Because otherwise there's no, it's stupid. There's no credibility there. There's nothing unique to share kind of thing. So those are a few things that I'd encourage kind of anybody watching this to, to think about. You know, what are the goals that you need to hit in life whereby you know, you'd be satisfied and happy when you're 50, when you're 60, what needs to be done, write, write it down, put it in order of maybe what's most important, what's least important, what's most time critical and get on with that and think a few moves ahead, you know, so what's the ultimate goal and kind of work back from there to where you are now. 
and just look at what needs to happen. So if you've got a business right now, you're making 10, 20K a month and you want to scale to half a mil a month. Well, firstly, why? Are you actually sure you want to hit 500 or is that just your ego? You know, why do you need 500? Why not 650? Why not 325? Why 500? Often it's just made up. and It's nonsensical. What is your net margin going to be? Do you want to keep it high? Are you happy to sacrifice it to grow further? Do you want to exit one day or not? What what level of wealth would you be happy with? You know, so I I think I told you this, Lotfi, when I when I saw you when we had coffee. But my goals, my key top three goals were pretty simple: two and a half million pounds worth of real estate bought outright, at least a million pounds in cash after tax in the bank, sell the company. Those were the three guiding ones. And then like the mastermind was on the side, doing the book was on the side, blah, blah, blah. But those were the key ones and, and that kind of thing. So just know where you're going and why you're going there, you know? So. Amazing. This, this is something I want to ask you about the life. And essentially, minim, minimalism, focus, strategic goal setting. If I, if I were to summarize it, yeah, because you keep things very minimalistic. Also, one more thing, because about, what about like expenses as well? Like like your lifestyle expenses, do you, do you keep that low as well? Yeah. So, I mean, dude, I, I track everything. I've got a spreadsheet for, you know, the what's coming in. I've got a spreadsheet for stuff that's recurring. I've got a spreadsheet for stuff that's not recurring. I've got a spreadsheet for expenses, all this stuff. But um yeah, I mean, really, my goal has always been to actually get rid of as many expenses as possible and get my passive income up as high as possible. So, I mean, just the rent from real estate covers my bills about 7x right now, 6, 7x, just the rent from real estate uh, through owning my apartment outright. Because my, my rent, as as you know, is like 8k a month. So to buy outright... Right, well, that is gone now. It's zero, apart from a service charge. But the service charge is like $400 a month, 300 some something like that. So I've got rid of that expense. Cool. What else can I get rid of? So I like to engineer financial freedom, you know, and keep keep things balanced. I waste a bit more money nowadays, you know, so I don't track my spending too intensely you know like i'll pay for a thousand dollar dinner once or, t- or twice a month like i'll buy you know i went on holiday last week just spur of the moment and spent like four grand five grand on that um for like a week which is pretty excessive but um i'm in a kind of position to do that now and you you've you got to treat yourself but yeah to, to answer your question i'm very big on knowing you know especially what's what needs to go out and kind of replacing that with passive income it's a good good game to play good game to play yeah of course yeah so essentially you track everything you know what's coming in and out you you try to optimize as much as much possible but you also live in the moment and you know you feel like spending somewhere where you go you just do it but um but as a whole overall it's all kind of within your system <laughs> even though Without- you're um yeah so you know i I, I kind of know the most important stuff you know so i know exactly what the service charge is i know exactly what my meal prep costs for a full month of food i know exactly what like my aircon and electric and water bills all are so all the main fixed costs i know exactly what that fucking number is exactly what that number is and i know exactly what rent is coming in what other passive little streams exactly what what they're bringing in Blah, blah, blah. I keep a very, very close eye on all the recurring, you know, business coaching stuff. So I know exactly what that number is at all times, what's what's recurring, um, you know. And the re- recurring element is awesome as well, by the way. I think more coaching businesses, I think people should stop selling like 10K courts and make it a bit like add some kind of recurring element, you know, and add more value, keep the customers, you know, yeah, just, yeah, I think re- recurring is super important, but track track your numbers, man. Know what's coming in and, and what's going out and play that game to get what's going out down and what's coming in up. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one thing I've been um, doing with all the passive income. Like, I've been measuring like my outflows and like what percentage of it is currently passive and then kind of growing that. Um, mm. Yeah, so just just kind of calculate how much more passive do I need to kind of uh, match it and then increase it from there, which is it's actually quite a nice way to live if you have that passive income coming in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, that's like, Let's that's see. the, that's the great financial game right there is, is, is in my opinion, in an ideal world, if you can get your passive income, at least three X more than everything that you spend in a month, including discre discretionary stuff, then you're free, you're free. And then any higher is just better for peace of mind. If you can get it to fucking five X, 10 X, you're, you you feel a lot more relaxed like dude I've, I've never felt i've never felt more relaxed in my life since since selling the business you know i feel just a bit calmer and like i can do more things but the weird thing is now i can do stuff i don't want to do it anymore you know it's like um people don't want a lambo they want the ability to buy the lambo people don't want a mansion you know you don't want the expenses that come with the fucking mansion but you want the ability to buy one you know uh, people want to go on these mad holidays, luxury holidays, and waste money. You kind of don't, you know. Uh, you just want the ability to do those things. That's for me. Like I love the feeling of I could go and buy a Lambo right now today with fucking cash. Like I could go and buy an apartment in Dubai and spend like significant money cash and buy it. That's just a good feeling, man. That's it. It, it keeps you calm. It makes you feel good, but you don't actually really want to buy it. You know, that's what I've found. 100%. Yeah. Because once you know you've got it, um, yeah, once you know you can do it, kind of more than halfway there, I mean, if you can. Um, I wanted to ask you as well about the books, because, you know, you, you post a lot of quotes as well. I think, what was it yesterday, the day before? I saw that one. It was actually really good. Something along the lines of most people, they, Monday to Friday, it's like to stay on the same level and then the weekends is to get ahead, right? So what what's like your book strategy? Do you read books regularly? What's some of your favorite books that you highly recommend people read? Yeah, for sure. Well, dude, let, let's touch on that quote for a second. So yeah, if you work the standard Monday to Friday, if let, as an entrepreneur, right? Because it just pisses me off so much when entrepreneurs take weekends off. I'm like, you are an idiot, man. Like, you are an idiot. I'm, I'm extremely, extremely, extremely driven to to achieve what I want to achieve. And dude, I, I will work fucking 12 hours a day, seven days a week for months. And I have, and if I need to do it again, I fucking will like work ethic is, is, is the one. And I just hate lazy people. I just hate it so much. So yeah, Monday to Friday keeps you in the game. Saturday, Sunday is, is, is where you get ahead. Um, and if you're taking Saturday, Sunday off, man, you don't deserve to, to be, to be rich. And, and, and wealthy. You just don't deserve it, in, in, in my opinion. There's ways to optimize your time so you can take time off. You should take time off. You've got to take time off. It's healthy, you know, but, but you've got to work. If something has to be built, man, I can't sleep. Like if, if, if we need new ads, I can't sleep, man, until they're done. If we need to change something in the business or hire, I can't rest un, 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 until it's done, you know? So work ethic, super important. But anyway, books, yeah, I, I love to read for sure because it calms me down and it just reorganizes my mind a bit. And I, I see it as kind of a calm installing of good knowledge, you know, and there's so many good, good books out there. Man, there's so much stuff in books. Like one of my favorite books mm -hmm. is Ready, Fire, Aim. Have you ever read that? on my list I mean, you should read it it's good yes so that one any any other ones you would say i'll give you another fantastic book as well i was just looking at my bookshelf um swim with the sharks without getting eaten alive that is a very good strategic uh business book it's a bit old school it, i think it was written in like the 90s but man that is a great book um principles by ray dalio is another fantastic book. It's a bit more high level. Like you don't need to read that unless you really want to build like a big, great company. But that's a great book. Um, yeah, there's loads, man. There's there's absolutely loads. I think um, 
I'm, yeah, I'm excited to write my own. You know, I think this is really going to help people, man, this book. I've put a lot into it. Nice. Yeah, Principles, I, dude, I've, I've read that a lot of times. I really like that book, especially the way it's written. It's very, very simple. Um, that one I really like. Uh, as for your book, what's, what's, the, what's like the theme behind it going to be? Yeah, it's, it's just everything that I've learned, man, from going from nothing to, to where I'm at today. And I've laid it out kind of in order of, like, it's kind of built for someone that has an idea for an info business or an agency. And then similar to Ready, Fire, Aim, it's every stage. So like offer creation, pricing, the right funnel structure for that offer and price. Do you need a back end? If so, here's how to build it. I give away all the funnel structures. I give away my sales script. I teach people how to write ads. Like everything that I've ever learned is in that book for, for, for you. Like there's nothing else to buy. There's no upsells that you need. You, do, you don't even need business coaching with me. You could, if you read that book, you're going to know everything that I know. Everything. All, all, all the way from start to finish. So it's quite a lot of words. I think it's going to be like 65,000 words or some shit. But it's just mad. Like I've just put everything in there for people. And the idea is like, whatever stage you're at, you can buy it, go to that stage and it will teach you what to do in that stage. So hopefully it's good. Hopefully people like it. Um, how, how much is 65,000 words? Is that like, is it like that? A or lot more. It... Principles. Is that how much is Ray Dalio's one? Is there something like that? Is it like half of that? Maybe. Oh. Ray. I'm just trying to visualize. Word counts. Um, right. So principles, I believe, is 148,000 words, apparently, according to Google. So mine's like half. That. A bit less than half, yeah. 60, 60K. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a textbook. Don't worry. <laughs> it's going to be like that thick. Dictionary. <laughs> like the o o Oxford Dictionary of Business. Yeah, I mean, 60,000, it just sounds like a lot, but I don't know how much it is relatively, but um, that's, that's not too bad. I mean, because you got to cover the stuff at least. you got to be able to cover everything. I mean, is this like final or is this like your estimated number of words? Yeah, that's not final yet. So it's with the editor now. Sure. Um, we've still got a few calls to go over stuff. Then they will do the final edit. Then it goes to proofreading and then we do the cover and, and all that stuff. So it's not final yet, but it's kind of more or less there. Well, I think it's just going to be a pretty standard book size. I think most books are about 50,000 words, I think. Might be wrong. But... All right. All right. Wait, so, so it's pretty much done then? Like, yeah. you, if you're sending out to the editors? Yes, yeah, done. Oh, wow. So when's it coming out, uh, approximately? Uh, about six weeks-ish, eight weeks. Oh, that's really soon. That's, that's like, yeah. so it's basically literally here. I mean, are you, do you have like a promo in place to like some free sale or something, or are you just going to on the day just say, hey, I've got a book? Yeah, I think um, I actually don't have a strategy yet for, for, for how I'm going to sell it. I mean, I want to do a book funnel, right? So I want to run ads and sell the book for $7, $9, whatever. And the, the idea is to, acquire buyer leads, right? So I'm going to build a list of people that have given me money and got value, massive value from, from that small investment. And the idea is to help it, uh, to use it to build my audience. So I'm hoping I'll get Instagram subscribers off it, YouTube subscribers off it. So it will build the network. It will build a lot of value and goodwill within that network as well, because the book is pretty good. Hopefully people will like it. And then it will probably get me business coaching clients and, and fill the mastermind. So that's kind of the idea. I don't want to scale. I'm, I don't want to scale too far because I don't want to, I just want to grow slowly and through value and good word of mouth and, and that kind of thing. So I'm not going to scale it to the moon, but that's kind of my plan. Yeah. That's kind of my plan. Yeah. She definitely have some free sale promo or something like mm. I don't know how you would do it, but just so people know it's coming. Um, yeah, mm. you have some people who buy kind of immediately. 
I mean, are you going to have an Amazon or like how how are you sending this thing? Yeah, so it it will be on Amazon. There'll be um, a soft cover, hard cover audio book on on Audible, and I'm I'm going to read that. I think so. People are going to hate my voice in 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 a few months. Jesus Christ! <laughs> After that bloody book, um, so it will be on Amazon, and I'll probably give people a heads up on Instagram as well. I'll probably post maybe two weeks out and be like join a waiting list maybe and, and build a little uh, email list of people waiting so that that could be cool yeah especially amazon is like i don't know she care about it but obviously people they like to have like you know get to a high rating and high ranking and all that stuff so they they have a lot of people ready to buy immediately and then it kind of pushes the book up but yeah i'm, I'm excited i mean it's pretty much around the corner so yeah um We'll be excited to get to get it myself. I mean, what's what's the name of the book going to be? How to Ten Million. Is that actually the name? How to Ten Million. Yeah. So is that so? That's actually the name of the book. Ninety nine percent. Yes. So th- there was a few different names that I was running with, like Ten Million Dollar Selling Strategies and stuff like that. But I, I put it out to my Instagram last week, so I gave them this list of names, right, and. Um, it could, could be fun to see which one you think is best. Actually, I'm going to pull them up right now and just tell you a few, and you can tell me which is your favorite. All right. So how to dot dot 10 million, right? That's kind of the, the one that I think is best, right? Or seven keys to scale was another idea. Making money is a learnable skill was one that my, my girlfriend came up with. Um, $10 million selling strategies. But the problem with that, Sounds good, but they're not selling strategies. It's ads, funnel, whatever. So that doesn't really make sense. Business growth, black book, seven figure selling strategies. Again, doesn't really make sense. So I'm just giving up, I think. I'm just going to go with how to 10 mil. But what do you think? I like it. I mean, um, yeah. And then I guess if you have like a good like subtitle, like that kind of says what it's about. Yeah. then it kind of plays plays into it so it, it could work i mean you could even try something that's like um more like a one word or even a two word kind of thing like it doesn't have to be like seven trading strategies to build a course business or something like that. like it has just so it's, it's it can sound more timeless so i think how to tell me it's it's definitely has a more timeless sound to it than the other ones but yeah, especially with a book, the more timeless it can sound, the uh, you know the the kind of better offers. Yeah, I think I kind of wanted it to stand out to people as well. So, like, if you see it in a bookshop, for example, and and you because everyone is interested in money, aren't they? So, how to ten million? It's like, what is that? Like, what am I going to learn in that book? You know, and the tagline yeah. I was thinking something like, "How to sell your knowledge and make millions." Or, or something like that, because it's kind of about selling your knowledge. I do touch on kind of agency and how you can sell services as well. But yeah, I'm just trying to not overthink it, really, because I'd rather have the book done and out with the wrong title than never finished with the right title, you know? So yeah, yeah, no, I, I like the, I like the, that's probably the best one, honestly. Like, the list. Well, and, or I would also say also something like a Williams Guide to Ten Million or something like that. So it has your name in it as well. It, it also sounds like your kind of guide. So like Williams Guide to XYZ. And you could change the word. I like that. That's, that's another way. Yeah, that's another way I'll think about it too. Yeah. Willie. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. is my guide, really, isn't it? It's everything that I've learned, but yeah. it's kind of, I've just taken chunks from everywhere. So stuff I've learned from Sam Ovens, stuff I've learned from Alex Becker, stuff I've learned from Cole Gordon. So it's just like everything that's worked for us across the last kind of seven years in in, in every element of the business. Because um, sometimes people, they don't know what they don't know. Like a lot of the business coaching clients that I get, when they go through the training, 
they're like, dude, I didn't even know that you could do that. Or like, man, I didn't even know that I could do that and get an extra 40K a month by just putting that there and changing that and, and stuff. You know, so it's actually mad what people don't know. It always surprises me when I'm like, let's do it. Let's just do a reoffer and it'll do 70K. They're like, what's a reoffer? <laughs> I'm like, you've got 70K right there and you don't even know how to get it. <laughs> like you literally don't even know and, and that kind of thing, you know? 100%, yeah. I mean, that's why your master, these masterminds and your mastermind is so valuable. It's like you can just see it and just tell them to do this and do that. Like, because everyone's just like, one direction you focus in the business yeah um, even even yourself you mentioned right you had mentors kind of look over your shoulder and just show you things as well yeah i mean dude yeah. on, on, honestly all, all of my growth is because of the mentors man like I'm, I'm 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 not smart i'm not particularly talented i just join alex becker's mastermind he says do that and i do that and i grow join someone's mastermind he says do that i do it and i grow that's all I've ever done. I just find people that know more, pay them to tell me what I'm doing wrong and just do exactly what they say. Exactly what, what they say. That, that's how I've grown. That's why I'm here today. I've just got the knowledge and copied it. Exactly. 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude, see if your books are important. And, you know, you're going to be including pretty much everything inside there. I think anyone that wants to learn strategies and how you did it exactly like step by step and if they want more advice they can easily read that book buy that book um, buy it, read it go through it for those for those people who are more advanced they can join your mastermind and get more personal help yeah, yeah. so where would someone go if, if, if they want to so for the book where, where can they buy the book it's literally a barely a month six weeks and then where can they join your mastermind yeah, for sure. So the best two places to follow me are Instagram and YouTube. Those are the only two social media networks that I use. So if you want to talk to me, pop me a message on Instagram. Uh, if you want to watch my videos, go to YouTube, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to announce the book on both of those platforms uh, when when the kind of time comes. So yeah, just follow me there. If you want more info on the mastermind, uh, just go to thedubaiboardroom.com. And if you want help growing your business, uh, again, just message me on Instagram, go to my website. The link is there. Um, read my story, go to the work with me page, book, book in a call with me, and it will be me on the call as well. So amazing. Yeah, amazing. So I will, I'll leave those links down below. So if anyone wants to work with William, join the mastermind and buy his book, it's all going to be in the description below. Uh, but yeah, so far, I appreciate you coming on for this interview today, sharing all the, all the advice, your story, the strategies, and everything that we spoke about. And um, yeah, if anyone wants to continue, have those links down below. I hope we'll see you soon. Nice. Thank you so much for having me, buddy. Really appreciate it.